In the previous video, we talked about explicit type conversion. Specifically, we converted data from, say, a string, float, or integer form into an integer. But here, we want to discuss the float function, which allows us to convert its argument into a float. Now, this function is arguably more flexible than the int function in that it can handle strings that look either like integers or like floats. So let's give some examples of this. Let's say we call the float function with the string 19. And we saw previously that the int function can handle this string. And this simply returns 19.0, the float version of that string. But if we had a string such as 19.4, we saw previously that int cannot handle something that looks like a float. The float function, though, has no problem with this. The float function can also accept numeric data. For example, if we pass the float function the argument 19, that's the integer 19, not the string 19, we get 19.0 as the return value, or if we have float of 19.4. Now we're just passing as the argument a float, 19.4. We just get that same float argument back. Now, something to keep in mind is when I say something like the argument can be a string, a float, or an integer, what I really mean is that the argument can be any expression that returns a string, an integer, or a float. So we could have something like x is equal to 6. And then the argument of the float function might be the expression 3 times x plus 1. And in this case, we get 19.0, because 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 is 19. And then we just get the float version of that. Now assume we want to prompt the user for an age. And we're going to store that as an integer value. But let's say we don't want to explain to the user our desire for an integer value. And if they enter a number with a fractional part, we don't want that to cause a problem. We'll just silently discard that fractional part. So how do we do that? How do we allow them to enter an age such as 19, the integer, or 19.4? and have that work. Well, here's one possible solution. We could say age is equal to, well, we want to store this as an integer. So let's call that integer function. Now we have to get input. So we know we need the input function. But that will return a string. Let's go ahead and convert that to a float. Whatever string it returns, we'll convert it to a float. And now in the innermost function is the input function. And here, we'll give the prompt of enter an age. OK, so let's give this a try. Hitting return, we get that prompt. And if we say 19, well, what is the age now? Let's just print that out. And it's 19. I'll recall that input statement. And here, let's say the user said 19.4. That didn't cause any problem. And if we print the age now, it's still 19. So working from the innermost function call, we call the input function to prompt for and get the user's response. That's returned as a string. The float function then converts that string to a float value. And then the int function converts that float value to an integer. It just discards the fractional part. And we get our desired integer age.